Like now. Yeah, like now. Do it. Begin. All right. Welcome back to the Dr. Z Show. We're your hosts, James Franco and Tom Holland. I get to be Tom Holland. <laughs> James Franco, then. Sweet. James Franco annoys me. He just like, I mean, has that face that like, irritates me. I see him and I'm like, I'm irritated now. You're like, you know, it'd be good punching him in the throat. I don't know about that. We'll have well, to we'll have to wear those. Those, those can be our our work shirts for when we're filming. Oh yeah. So Jacob and I both got show, shirts that were from uh, this YouTuber that I watch called Phil DeFranco, and he has this really big podcast called the Phil DeFranco Show. Well, it's like it's not a podcast; it's a new show that he does on YouTube. Um, but he said, like, sort of accidentally one day, he was like, "Oh, like, be sure to like and subscribe, otherwise I'm gonna punch you in the throat." And people thought it was great, and so he ordered, he opened his own school, Throat Punch University. Jacob and I went, and so now we've got shirts. We went to yep. Throat Punch University, and all we got was this dumb t-shirt. And a punch in the throat. I mean, yeah, that's, that's instead of, like, shaking your the, the person's hand, like, when you walk across the stage, you punch each other in the throat. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, the the entire there's only two classes <laughs> at differing like levels punching so and getting punched. Yeah, there's the 100 like 100 level courses like how to first it's like how to endure getting punched in the throat and 200 level courses are like how to dodge getting punched in the throat. <laughs> 300 level courses are how to punch throats. I thought you said there were only two courses. That's like three courses. But they're like at differing levels. So it's it's really, there's only two categories of classes, like being punched and punching. Okay, I see. I understand what you're saying. And then the, 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 400, the senior level course is... The senior project. <laughs> yeah. You have to punch 50 people in the throats. And That's a large number of people. To, I mean, to punch in the throat. It's like it's not like just just a regular like large, large number of people. But maybe if the requirement is just punch fifty throats, you could find a hydra and punch fifty of its throats. <laughs> it's very specific. Also, it's is also, a hydra. It seems like a large maybe. <laughs> is it only if you cut off their head that they grow a new one? So if uh, you yes. collapse. If you collapse their tracheas... <laughs> I knew we were going to get into this somehow. <laughs> Wait, what are we here to actually talk about? I don't know. <laughs> well, we were going to talk about D&D, because uh, my D&D campaign sort of started. D&D Dynamite. <laughs> if you don't do that every single time, will be a sign that the world is ending. I am nothing because you if do not that every single time. <laughs> anyway, my D&D campaign started yesterday, so that'll be fun. Claire decided she's going to be a bard. So, that'll be fun. I've never been a bard. Which is weird. I feel like if anyone I know would be a bard, it would be you. No. I mean, Bard's... clearly not. They're just too... I don't know, Bard Party? What? Party Crouch? I don't know. They're, they're something. They're too something. It's, I mean, it's not, it, like, I don't have a stigma against Bards the way that I do against Paladins. And I'm playing a Paladin now. Only yeah, I was like, why do you have as, something against Paladins? You are a Paladin. It was only as a joke, though, because I have, I have a negative one to dexterity and a zero modifier on strength. And so it's that's pretty great. Yeah, we're we're not optimized at all. Clearly not. So what? What? Wait. Who? Whose campaign are you in? You're still in Shields' campaign. Yeah. Reminds me, we need to have him on the show one of these one of these days. Oh, that would be great. We can talk about the Beyblade uh, Extended Universe some more. 
uh, Connor sent me like a a TikTok um, of <laughs> some some school like at their on their last day they had a giant Beyblade tournament and it's like everyone is around for it like watching from like above and just from all sides like the entire school is just crowded around this little base stadium. <laughs> It's I love I love schools that like let students do stuff like that. Just like completely ridiculous things. It is pretty good. So Jacob finally got Dead Cells and he played it. And then two hours later, he texted me and said that he beat it. No, <laughs> no, no, I didn't. It was it was many more hours than that. It was with could, some could... some speed though. It was three days after I got it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I got it on Saturday, and I beat it on Tuesday. beat it, so you, like, fought the last boss. Just, like, a bunch of content. Yeah, there's... I'm I'm sort of... I mean, I'm looking for help online, but I'm trying to avoid spoilers for the, like, true ending. Oh, with the Res of the Giants stuff? Yeah. And also the five cells um, door at the end. Oh right, right, right. Man, even so playing I... with the one, even playing with one boss cell is is very difficult. Like I can't imagine what five it's, was like. It's crazy hard because there's like there's so many more of the just higher health enemies. Meanwhile, really those like pirate captain guys can get fucked. I hate them. I hate them so much. The heavy They're crossbow, so strong. Though. Like yeah, the heavy I crossbow. I think it has done the most work for me. That and ice shards. Um, I don't like ice shards. I like the ice blast better than ice shards. Ice blast is slow though, and so look, powerful. So pros, pros though for uh, ice shards. Ice shard when you when frozen enemies when you hit them they break out of being frozen and then they can attack you again but when they're the ice shards slow them down so much and the effect stays the whole time even while you're like wailing on them so okay it, it, it makes their attacks and it's a, it's aoe it comes out way faster um and i've just i've had a lot of a lot of success with ice shards okay yeah fair that's fair. You're going to have to hurry or you'll miss the fair. Never. Forward air? What? The forward air? Oh, Sorry. Fair. Smash terminology. I know what Nair smash forward. terminology is. I'm not a plebeian. <clears throat> so what is ever has anyone ever um I was thinking about this being of like plebeians. Has anyone ever like talked down to you about like your knowledge of like games or like gaming terminology? Like you didn't understand someone something someone said and you were like, they were like, Oh, but like everyone knows what this is like Nope. Has it happened to you? Um I'm trying to think. I th- I know that it has, but I'm trying to think what it was. I think it had something to do with World of Warcraft, which I never played. Okay, that's not technically true. I played it for like 20 minutes. Me too. Played it for about 20 minutes. I couldn't get into it. This wasn't for me. Probably because you and I grew up playing RuneScape. Yeah, RuneScape was free. And membership was cheaper than... Even paying for World of Warcraft. So it was like, why do why? Of course. Um, um Go ahead. <laughs> I was thinking of gaming terminology, Dead Cells stuff. Oh, there was one time though, um, that Ian and I went to this this guy, like we so we went to SmashCon, uh right. and this guy like, Oh wanted- right, that guy that you ran into that was like yeah. Okay. So it was it was kind of unfortunate because we were in college and found out that he was in high school at like after the fact. Um, so that was a little awkward. 
Um, but we like went to his house to play Smash, and it was super far away. And like we didn't know, like we had no idea that he was gonna live so far away. Um, and well, you didn't like because you didn't like map quest or whatever, like his house. Not sponsored. <laughs> uh, um, well, I mean, we just kind of like agreed to go before we had the address. Is kind of the thing, and then and we got the change bond. Yeah, we were like, "Wow, like this is so far away." Um, so we were playing, and I'm not great, and as far as like, I can't win tournaments for Smash, um, or anything. But you're like acceptable at the game. Yeah. Um, but we were playing with this guy and his friend, and he he was better. Like, like Ian's better than I am, and so, like, Ian was doing okay. Because Ian only plays one character. Yeah, and he's played, like, in tournaments, and, like, you know, he's he's put more hours into it than I think either of us. Um, oh, I'm sure. Yeah, because he, cause he both of us played, combined. like, at, like, tournament level, basically. Like, like, minor tournaments. So, um, yeah, so this kid, his name was Danny, because, uh, like, I don't, I don't because know. That's his what his name. parents named him. Like, yes. Um, so he had this. <laughs> he said because he had, other, was like... he had this other friend there who was um who was also like really good, uh and he, and a guy named Samus, and so he beat me, um and then he played as Samus against me and beat as me Samus. With, yeah, as Samus, and Danny got really mad, like super mad. He was like, "That was so disrespectful!" Like. How dare you use his mane against him and then beat him with it? Like he got like really, really defensive of me and like etiquette, I guess. Um, and then I found out from Ian like uh, a a while later that um, he had been banned from different tournaments and things. Um, being for, a yeah, for like uh, sort of more for just being kind of erratic. Um, and then also like his parents had banned him from like he wasn't supposed to be going to these things but he was like sneaking out to go play smash <laughs> that's the most nerd ass shit i've ever heard in my life like i'm a big fucking nerd but that is the most nerd ass shit i've ever heard of yeah ever like that's crazy he snuck out to place like like what <laughs> yeah, it was it was pretty crazy, but uh, yeah, I was like, I'm fine. Like, I'm here to. If he's better with me as that character, I'd rather like watch his playstyle and learn how to get better than like wallow in my own self pity. <laughs> oh, like be bad at the game. Yeah, like, like no, like if there's a better way, show me. Like I'm, that's that's I'm, the thing I don't like about fighting games is that people are so like concerned with how other people play them. Like it's a game. Like why don't you chill? Like what if you calm down? <laughs> um, I just imagined uh, in the like Oblivion or Skyrim stat thing, like chill one hundred. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like when people. When people post like the tweets or yeah you know, like whatever text conversations and it says like the the meme of like the illusion 100 or whatever mm-hmm. yeah so anyway so are you gonna see far from home when it comes out when does it come out i don't know soon probably then no <laughs> Oh wait, no, that reminds me. Okay, that's that's that that's what that reminded me of. So if I don't know when it's coming out, then I'm not seeing it. Don't worry, it's related. So Claire and I are gonna get legally married on the fifteenth, right? And so uh-huh. when we were discussing this with our priest, who who is like allowed to like legally marry us or whatever, um she was like, Oh, how does the fifteenth work for you guys? And we were like, Oh, that's great. And like in the back of my mind I was like there's something going on that day that I should know about, but like I don't, I don't remember what it is. So like it can't be that important. So like I'm just like I'm not gonna worry about it. So I didn't worry about it. 
and so we talked to my mom. Said, hey, we're on our way to go to lunch. And we talked to my mom. And my, we were like, oh, how does the 15th work? And my mom was like, um... And I was like, oh, that doesn't, like, work. That's, like, oh, that's too bad. And she was like, no, no, no. Like, your dad and I are, like, going out to dinner that day. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, you know, of course. They, like, they, you know, they like to go out to dinner. They go out to dinner all the time. And she was like, yeah, for our anniversary and his birthday. And I was like, oh, that's what that day is. I can never, I can never remember my father's birthday. Like, when it is. Because it's, like... Like, of course, I remember my own birthday. And my mom and my sister's birthday is 10 days apart. So, like, it's really easy to remember both of them. Yeah. But my dad's is, like, in June. So, like, it's, I don't know. I, I feel like I should remember it because that means it's 10 days before Claire's birthday. So, I don't know. That's like a, my, my dad and my brother, they have birthdays in uh, September. And I always mix up the dates between the two of them. I'm like, is that one the eighth or oh the which third? which which is which it, i I'm like, like it's somewhere in there it's one of these one of these <laughs> honestly i didn't have that much of a problem with that because there is a there is a section at the beginning of that game we're talking about uh, just cause 2 <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Before we get too into it, um, we've got too many inside jokes that like no one's gonna be able to piece together. <laughs> the lore you have to piece together the lore, like Dark Souls or Dead Souls, like piece together the lore yourself. Um, but yeah, so in Just Cause Two, like in the beginning of the game, you you go on like a training mission. There's like this training like area, yeah. sort of like well, sort of like Breath of the Wild. Where you like have that like okay. initial area on the plateau before you yeah. like get into like the meat of the game. It's sort of like that. The gourmet meat. Yes. So I didn't ask you about this actually, um, because you've been playing Breath of the Wild. Have you run into the uh Robin Williams character at all? What? No. So there's a character in the game. His name's not like Robin Williams, but um, you know Robin his Williams not named, Robin. named his daughter after Princess Zelda. Yeah, yeah. So there's a character, and I cannot remember his name. I'll have to look it up though and send it to you. But there's a character that's his face is modeled after Robin Williams, and he's meant to look like Robin Williams. Oh, you you would know him though when you run like you'll know him when you run into him. Man, that's crazy. Yeah, I I mean I recently beat it and then started playing Master Mode because I finished Trial of oh, the Sword. Oh yeah, that's right. You told me about that. Yeah. How's that uh, How's that working out for you, <laughs> Master Mode? It's not. Nope. It's just harder, yeah. right? Like, there's just more enemies, and they hit harder. Yeah, they're they're all upgraded, and uh, there's I mean, there's more items to compensate, so that's not the Wouldn't worst. Would the shrines be easier though? Like, I feel like that would make the shrines like you could just go to all the shrines, like you know, like kind of immediately, and do all those like little quests to like get your get your stats up, right? But, I mean, who wants to do that all again? Well, then why play the game at all again? That's, like, an essential part of the game. Like, What? <laughs> that's also assuming that I remember where any of the shrines are. Oh, well, that's true. There's, like, like how many of them are there? There's, like, 100-something? 120. Yeah, there's 120 shrines. The, and I mean, the, the DLC added, what, like, five more? Just four. Oh, four more? I mean, there's there's actually a ton more shrines, but most of them don't give you like spirit orbs. Um, they're for other things. Um, so they're for things to upgrade your champion powers, so that they recharge Champ faster. Champion power. Oh, from the okay, okay. Right for a second, I was like, "What are champion powers?" Let's get a bike. Oh yeah, the motorcycle. I'm hyped for for doing that to get the motorcycle. 
pretty fun. Although it is a little silly though, because it's supposed to be a divine beast. Like, and it's basically just a really fast horse, right? Yeah, and it's shaped like a horse. It's shaped like a horse. Shaped like a, it's a motorcycle that's shaped like a horse. Is it like tall like a horse? No, it's it's like a motorcycle, and then the head of the motorcycle is a horse. It's like a, it's like a unicorn with like its head down and like a spike coming out of it. Oh, so you can use it to like run enemies over. Yeah, it doesn't do very much damage though. It's a spike. On the end of a very fast stick. I mean, it doesn't do damage. Doesn't do very much. Like well, it'll million damage. <laughs> it'll move them aside and do about as much damage as the normal bomb. That's very disappointing. Yeah. It can jump. But it can jump. jump? Very, the jump isn't very effective. So it's 100% just a horse that they re painted basically that you have to feed it take it needs fuel and you can put anything into it i mean you could put anything into a real horse they might not like it very much but <laughs> that's if that's your definition of what a horse is cure a horse cancer with nickels <laughs> <laughs> So I was at um I was at the LGS yesterday to wait to go over to our friend's house where we were gonna play Matt, or where we were gonna play D and D, and so I was like hanging out and I was like making notes like in my D and D notebook for you know stuff that I had to remember later, and so I stopped for a second because my hand was cramping up to check my phone, and I had my phone down on the desk and I was like looking at it and I was like oh okay, and I was looking at my emails, and then like while I was there the email thing like reloaded. So it sent, like, it came up with um, a bunch of new emails. And it was like, one of them was, um, I was talking about the dance that's next week at Clan Echo, where Claire and I go swing dancing. And next week is Big Bad Voodoo Daddy. And I've been, like, looking forward to this, like, like forever. For years. Sure. A long time. And, and the subject line just said, are you ready for Big Bad Voodoo Daddy? And I stood up in the middle of the store and I was like, yes! And then I looked around and remembered where I was. And I was like... I like sat back down. But the thing was, like, there were a couple people that turned around and were like, what the heck is this person doing? But most of them were just like, eh. Like, okay. Like, typical behavior of, like, people. Yeah, they're like, he probably just pulled a foil Liliana again. I was less excited when I pulled the foil Liliana. I was yeah. excited about it, but I wasn't, I wasn't that excited. It wasn't Big Bad Voodoo Daddy. That reminds me of, uh, just because I listen to so much EDM, uh, when I'm in the library studying, I'm just like, I want to dance so badly, but I'm like, I'm in, a, I'm in the library. I can't just like... Why can't you dance in the library? Because I don't want to, I don't want to like make a fool of myself just in the public. Yes, you, do. yes, you do. I want everyone to be listening to my music. Is the problem? I want them all to know why I am dancing. So you should find where the uh, where like the music gets played from when they're closing the library. And just oh, like yeah. unplug whatever it is and like plug in your phone. <laughs> like play that. Play uh... That's how you get it done. Play Super Duper Fly. <laughs> that's in the Facebook memories today, actually. If you go look at it. Oh, really? Yeah, that oh, picture yeah, yeah, of yeah, us I having a conversation. I and I, yeah. I pulled up that picture on my phone and I showed it to Claire this morning. And she, <laughs> I was like, who's this conversation between? And she looked at it for like three seconds. It was like, you and Jacob. <laughs> Without a doubt. Maybe maybe not even three seconds. But she looked at it. She she knew instantly. Like what what does that say? What does it mean? It means we took that song way too seriously, I think. Yeah. It's not even a good song, like <laughs> to the top. 
I like the beat. Get ready to rock. <laughs> There's a part about Space Ghost, I think? Or does he say Base Ghost? No, uh, this is Base up to the top. I like the beat. Get ready to rock. The Base goes through the... Oh, goes. I thought he said Ghost. Yeah. Base... yeah. It's like base goes through the floor, super duper fly. That Back to the base a, of the beat. A lot more sounds. <laughs> Man, I wanted in, like so bad for us in high school to do a choral arrangement of um, har- like harder, better, faster, stronger by Daft Punk. A choral? Ar- do they have? Yeah, of course they do. Yeah. It was really sad, though, because I could only find one acapella version of it on YouTube, and it was terrible. This was before Pentatonix did their um, did their remix. I don't really like Pentatonix. He does. Like, I like <laughs> Claire, actually. She loves I'm just Pentatonix. I, I, I like some of their stuff. <laughs> Abby chimed in, people's moms like Pentatonix. <laughs> That's, that's so true, though. <laughs> hey, mom, I got you. They're a Christmas CD. Yay! Meanwhile, my mom like listens to Metallica. Yep. She goes hard. <laughs> <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Is your mom the life of the party? <laughs> so, for reference and background information... I had to fill out, well, I didn't have to, but I filled out this survey that Claire and I's priest sent us, like, for premarital, like, counseling or whatever. And um, one of the questions that I read aloud to Jacob was, are you the life of the party? And it was one of those things where you could, like, agree or, like, you know, like, agree, strongly agree, disagree, strongly disagree, or you could be undecided about it. And so I said it out loud, and he answered. And then what what happened after that? Um, I mean, <laughs> Abby, I, I said that you throw a lot of parties. So in that sense, you're the life of the party, but you're not like the, you're not like at parties convincing people to go to other places to like keep the party going. Like, Except like, for that one time. You were there, right? At the most mobile party ever? Oh no, I think oh, most. You, wait, you weren't there. Most of most of your parties, I have been gone for. Like, oh right, you were on your mission when we did that. I told you about that though, right? We had a barbecue at my parents' house, and then like it started to rain, so we went to that park by Ian's house that has like the overhang. Yeah. And then yeah. we were there like at like ten thirty or whatever, and they shut off all the lights. So then we went to Krispy Kreme, and we did an acapella rendition of All Star in the parking oh, lot. Oh, that's And there great. were all these people in the drive through They, like, rolled down their windows. They were, like, clapping. <laughs> the most mobile party ever. That's awesome. <laughs> why, do I, why do I remember you being there, though? I mean, there was one time when we did go to a park... And then go to Krispy Kreme afterwards. Um, That's the that only time was, I can think of. That was, did that. Thing. that was another thing. Sarah was there. We yeah, like Sarah was at the party. We uh, went to. Um, it was it was a different park though. Um, the and everyone played. Uh, oh, was it for Brenna's birthday? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and the cops came like later, like when it was when it was dark and they were like what are you doing like thinking we were like doing drugs or something and uh there was also yeah yeah we we were there pretty late uh and then there was um that's the part i remember is the cops coming and being like Pretty why are you here humanity. i forgot the name of that game <laughs> played we what? played humanity or i remember that oh yeah because that's what you do as one does that's like the typical party game that people like play when they can't think of other things to do. Yeah. I'm More just glad that humanity, like... I'm just kind of glad that I haven't played like apples to apples in a really long time cuz like in high school it was like the game. 
But now I'm gonna Yeah, yeah. I mean it was it was the it was the high school cards against humanity. Yeah. But it's okay. <coughs> I'm choking on something. Your aspirations. <laughs> yes. My respirations, you mean? No, that's a that's a joke from uh, Rogue One. When if Director it's... Krennic, when Director Krennic goes to goes to Vajun to see, um, although they make Vajun look like Mustafar, but he goes to Vajun to see Darth Vader, and Darth Vader chokes him out with the Force, and is like, "Careful not to choke on your aspirations, Director." <laughs> Everyone in the theater at the same time was like, "Did." Vader just give a one-liner. <laughs> That's a great scene, though. I found out why everybody likes that movie so much and dislikes all of the other new movies because it's a heist movie. Yes, and it it barely has anything to do with Star Wars. Like, if you took the Star Wars out of the movie, it would still make like complete sense. Yeah. And it and after after you take the Star Wars out of it, it's just a heist movie. I hope episode nine is good. Me too. I'm but I mean, you know how I feel about them. Okay, yeah, episode eight was awful. It wasn't that bad. You They made poor decisions with the writing. Yes. But it was not like I think the like the whole thing about like the petition to remake the movie is is a bunch of shit. Yeah, that is pretty that's kinda kinda silly. Um but like there's a there's an analysis of the throne room fight scene. And oh yeah. it's it's so bad. The analysis is bad, or the... No, no, like, the throne room fight scene is bad. And that was one of my favorite scenes, until I saw this analysis, and I, it has one of those things where, like, there's a there's a bad guy who, like, falls over for no reason. Like, just... Oh, one of the, like, guards or whatever? Touched, like, no force is used against him or anything, he just falls over. Like, <laughs> just like, in the, there's a scene in, uh, in Dark Knight Rises where that happens as well, where, like, a bad guy's, like, not fighting anyone, and just, like, falls down. <laughs> Is this where I'm supposed to fall? Yeah, so... Yeah, that and... There's just... I don't know. Because, like, it... it Visually, it was... There were, there were parts of the movie that were really visually impressive. Um, but, like... My major gripe with the movie was there's there was no reason for her to withhold the plan about going to the other about going to um it's not it's not Kedjum, it's uh it's the salt planet that they went to. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But there was there was no reason to withhold that plan. She was yeah. she was hundred percent okay with just being like, Oh, there's a plan, don't worry. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but there's a plan. Yeah, like you have to trust me. I, well, you're a character we've never met. <laughs> it was it was lazily written, but yeah. I liked it because it was Star Wars. So, yeah, I do wonder if they were like, let's up the drama by by doing this. Yeah, I mean, probably like knowing Disney and their lust for money. I mean, call it something else. Uh, I mean, really? I was just, I was just imagining them like, like, uh, um, y- you know that like, like sexy saxophone music or whatever that they use, uh, when there's uh, any kind of, like, when there's like a romantic, like potential moment. Oh, smooth, uh, like jokes. smooth jazz. Yeah, and they're like, wow, 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 like. Right. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. So I was imagining that with like a Disney executive like sitting down to dinner and just like a pile of cash like on the other <laughs> or like them at a or like a pile of cash at a bar and he like sits down and he's like so I'll come here often. 
<laughs> Let me buy you a drink. <laughs> like, like, pull some uh, cash, like, out of the pile. <laughs> he pulls more money out of <laughs> I don't understand what, what marketing's big deal is with, uh, with inanimate objects having personalities. Because my, my head immediately went to the progressive commercials. Oh, with, with the, the box. weird box? <laughs> <laughs> why, does it, why does that exist? Like, why is this box a character with a personality and, like, a... Like, what? I mean, he had a good voice actor. Like, that's the only thing... It doesn't, it doesn't make a person... Like, it doesn't make a character. I mean, sometimes it can, but... Like, why does that exist? I mean, maybe they were like, Geico has a gecko. We need, we need our own thing. But a box? <laughs> uh, I mean, they had Flo, right? For a while? Yeah, but, and I don't know why she, like, fell out of favor. She, she angered their gods. <laughs> She refused. Insurance gods. Refused to complete the ritual. <laughs> That's horrifying. And so they sacrifice her and summoned the box. No, she's still in the commercials. She's in the commercials with the box. <gasps> and I think it's because the box is like the box is like meant to represent their like bundling of all like the policy that you can like bundle the policies together or whatever. But if they're gonna bundle policies, they should show him like getting married and having kids with like other policies, like them like. Creating no, the box is policies. the bundle of policies. He's a mutant. <laughs> they should show him then, like, uh, like the the broccoli that ate its whole family, like their <laughs> his dark past. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey kids, you should eat broccoli. It'll help you grow big and strong. I ate my whole family, and now I'm hella jacked. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, no, but it's. I'm sure that that box had. There were other like. There were other uh, deals on like car insurance. What like what what insurance do you think he started off as that would have turned to cannibalism? <laughs> Or or like Highlander Insurance. stuff, where he like like removed the heads of the other <laughs> the other insurance and then absorbed their power with lightning. Um, I I'd say he's homeowners insurance. Like that's what he started. Renter, off. Renters insurance. Oh, he's, he started off renters as a, insurance. He started off as a lowly renters insurance, and through cunning and de- deceit. Rose through the ranks and murdered his brethren. <laughs> and now he has write a whole of, story about it. And now he has all of the insurance policies. No one can stop him. He's become too powerful. <laughs> At first, it was just a stack of papers that was like, <laughs> like someone kept coming back each day, and they're like, they're like, huh? Like I didn't think these were stapled together yesterday. <laughs> We all take care of it tomorrow, and then eventually it was just this anthropomorphic box, and they're like, "Oh shoot!" Like, <laughs> it has gained sentience. He's like, "I demand to be in your commercials." <laughs> the poor CEO. I will kill an employee. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine him in the Joker, like in the dark, ni- or in the in the Dark Knight, as the Joker in the Dark Knight. <laughs> He's in the room with the guy who's pretending to be Batman. <laughs> oh, what's wrong? You're a sentient box. <laughs> You're a monster. <laughs> then you have like, I don't know, you have some like insurance broker who, <laughs> who's dressed up like Batman who just comes in and is like slamming his head against the table. <laughs> The box doesn't have a head, though. It's just a box. It has a face. Does it? Yeah. It, it has. A, yeah, it's not just like a box that's like box 
or fuck. I mean, like, it is. It has bendy leg things. Like, the edges of it bend to be, like, eat. You are aware we are now, like, on the internet discussing the anatomy of a sentient piece of cardboard. The box ghost! <laughs> Would would the box ghost? Who would win in a fight? <laughs> the progressive box or the box ghost? The progressive box. Everything's more powerful than the box ghost. Oh, that's true. Fear me. Could he I actually, death? I, I, um, when I was building the black magic deck that I have, there was a, there was a card that I needed that was a ghost, but I didn't have it. So I, like, put it in the deck, like, as a proxy that I drew. And so I drew, like, the box ghost on, like, where the art would be. Oh, man. That's great. I, th- I still have it somewhere. I'm trying to think of what card it's behind. Because I kept all the proxies because they were just little slips of paper. Now they're, like, behind the cards they were meant to represent. I'm trying to remember what card that one was. I'll, have to- I'll find it for you. That's great. Hooray. That was a good show. It was like one it of was. the last, one of the last like good Nick shows. Um, so also, it was Nickelodeon, right? It wasn't Disney. Yeah, yeah. A, a bit of lore that I didn't actually know about the show until I saw a video where they were discussing with the animator like what would have happened if he had made a sequel series where all the characters were older. Um. That was Butch Hartman, right? Yeah. Hartman. So uh, that's why it was good. Again, um, oh, I can't remember his friend's name. Uh, There's Sam and... The other one. The other one, with the backwards hat. Right. I know who you're talking about. Shoot, I feel bad. You feel Danny. bad because it's a black character. You can't remember yep. his name. Danny, Sam... He wasn't in a lot. Of, like, he wasn't in... Like, there were episodes where he was completely absent. Yeah. Sam was, like, the love interest character or whatever. Yeah. So she was in it more. Tucker. Tucker, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So Tucker actually became the mayor of the town at the end of the series. Like, the actual legit mayor. Like, as a, a kid? Yes. I don't know how it happened, but he became the actual mayor. And so, uh, weird. Butch Hartman thought that, like, he would have continued to kind of, like, would have been a corrupt mayor. Push... Yeah, he would have been a good mayor, and he would have pushed the city to be more, uh, like, Oops, to friendly. integrate technology more, and kind of become, like, a city of the future kind of deal. So, cool. That's uh, cool. yeah, d- it definitely was one of the, like, a, a bit like how Ben 10 grew in, like, power scaling, like, Danny definitely went from just being like kind of punk. yeah he's like here's your standard powers to being good. like a god more or less in well he from... learned he learned a bunch of stuff because there was that character Vlad who was like a big nemesis and then he yeah. like became his mentor or whatever for some reason yeah I, don't I think it was why a that like happened. A, it, it was a little bit like a Slade thing I think where Slade no, wanted to like, apprentice. Well, he wasn't like mentoring him to like make him become evil. I know it had something to do with his mother because that character was like creepily still attracted to Danny's mother. Yeah, he was like, he was like, I was this Playboy billionaire, and you married this like, oh, oh so. yeah, yeah, like I don't. He's like, I don't get it. Why couldn't my money and looks attract you? Because wow. you're a dick. Yeah. That's like essentially the reason. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I he became about a, that, like actually like he actual. He became like a weird vampire ghost. Really rich people. Like, are they actually like terrible? No. I I've met a lot of rich people who aren't terrible. So. I don't know, like. Yeah, I haven't met, like, hoity-toity rich people. I've met people who are successful, let's put it that way. I haven't met, like, really rich people. Real rich. The real rich. 
Hmm. I don't know. I mean, that would be that. Would, I mean, that a bit of a. I mean, I could see someone writing a thesis about that, like portrayals of class systems in cartoons. And if it, if it I needed reflects... an idea for my thesis, no. Because <laughs> <laughs> there, there was a. I actually saw a, uh, a like a, a poster um, that someone had made for a class uh, out here um, that was like, does the does the portrayal of families in Disney movies reflect like actual family dynamics? Of course um, not. Because there's a there's a pretty uh yeah, and I think I don't I don't remember if it did. Um in terms of like the percentage of movies, because there is the big stereotype of like everyone has to have like a dead parent. Like in a lot of media now, it's like you either have to be an orphan or be come from a single family home. Like that's the only way that like you can be an interesting character. <laughs> For some reason. Yeah. Yep. You're not allowed. You're not allowed to have any kind of nuanced like relationships. Because, unless because it's easier to build character growth if your when character there's something missing. Right. Yeah. You because then so. you build that into their character archetype. And then they're, like, suddenly interesting. Yeah. So, like, they're, like, looking for, like, a, a dad mentor character. Or, like, they need to learn to be more gentle or something. Because they never had a mom. Like, I don't know. No, I agree with, like, the ridiculousness of, like, needing that for character development. Well, sort of, like, remember when Legend of Korra came out and the first season ended? And I was like, alright, I'm not going to watch anymore. Because she was, like, going to kill herself at the end of this. Like, the entire first season, she did not develop as a character at all. Mm -hmm. And then, like, she was going to kill herself at the end of the, f the first season. And then that was her character development. And I was like, are you serious? Like, you need a character to think about suicide. Like, this is a, first of all, this is a kid's show. And this is on, like children's yeah. television and then eventually like it moved to totally online because it got really dark yeah um, it did get but really i was dark. like like i remember watching it being like are you serious right now like this is this is what you need for a character development like how bad has the writing become from like la from like airbender last avatar like or avatar that last airbender i was like are you how like how have you fallen this far in like being able or unable to develop characters? This is it was very disappointing. I mean, I didn't know that she was like when I watched it, I didn't make that connection. Um, I mean, I thought I I really liked the there there were problems that I had with the first season, but. I liked the villain. I mean, I guess I liked the villain more than I liked Korra. I mean, I went back, like, I went back and finally finished the series, and it, like, Last Airbender is, like, on, on a different level of cartoons. Like, yeah. just in general. Like, the, like, Legend of Korra doesn't even, like, doesn't even compare. Yeah. Yeah, but, it has some interesting characters. Whereas, Air, like, Avatar has all interesting A lot characters. of interesting characters, yeah. Yeah. The thing about, the thing about Legend of Korra, though, like, that, that still irritates me is, like, she didn't have, she's annoying. Like, she's the main character of your show, and she's, she's built like, like, Sokka from Last Airbender in the first season. But she's like that the entire show. All the yeah. time. And, like, eventually after season one, she, like, starts to become, like, not a terrible character. And the only thing that was interesting about her, to me, in the beginning of 
Legend of Korra was that there was this villain that she didn't know how to defeat. And she didn't know, like, what to do to become better than this villain. Yep. So, yeah, I, like, her, I like her solution on... for that was to was to think about killing herself. Which is, uh, like, she, not she how you was, deal like, with I'm not the Avatar anymore. Like, she was, like... Well, because you took away her bending, right? Yeah. And it the thing that was kind of dumb, I guess, about it was that she she had well, I mean, it's it's a little interesting because you see that uh Aang had to Aang was re- like sort of rejecting the mantle of the Avatar for a while, and then he came into it and became his own and like so his journey is really interesting that he ran away he didn't he wasn't like i'm gonna like i'm gonna end my life because you know because i'm not like i'm not the like i don't want to be the avatar i'm not the avatar anymore like yeah no but that that's not what i mean i mean that he he was coming into it she it's showing from the other side she's grown up her whole life with her identity as being like like she's really proud of that like and that's why she's an annoying character is because you don't want your main characters to be like prideful like you want them to exemplify things and and struggle with things and grow like in like you want if they have character faults they shouldn't be the main like what you're seeing constantly or them like dealing with their character faults in, in dumb ways by like she's prideful, and the way she deals with things she can't handle is by being angry about them. Like, like that's not like who, want, like who wants that to be your character um, that you're like rooting for, like as you know, especially for a kids show, or whatever. But um, she is basically like just like really proud of that the whole time, and is like, I can be anyone because I'm the best. Is kind of like her her attitude. Um, and then she comes against something that she can't beat, and like you said, deals with it in ways that are not great um, by either getting angry. Like, she's just like just angry. <laughs> like, but th- she's like, the- I, haven't, I haven't dealt with resistance my whole life. The other problem she has, though, is like so many of her like mentor characters are like no like the whole first season especially like no you need to be more careful no like don't underestimate this guy like you need to do this you need to do this and she just ignores them like yep. completely like and they've been t- but they've been teaching her her entire life to be this great bender and to be this avatar and to be like the hero and she just ignores them but is still the hero somehow and so that, like, that, that's, like, the other side that annoys me about it is, like, she has all these supporting characters that can support her character development as a good character. She just ignores them. You know what? The show would have been more interesting if she had not been the main character. If she had been, like, this example of, like, a sucky avatar who, like, gets humbled later on but isn't the main character. Like, Who would you have made the main character? Uh, like Asami. Like Asami was dope. Like As- yeah. Asami, uh, what's his face? Uh, Mako. Like they, like, like their their little trio is more interesting because she deals with like her dad helping a Being terrorist. Evil. Like, yeah. Like that's really interesting. Like the that's like emotionally gripping. Like you see her, her grow and change and like have to, you know, deal with these emotional issues in ways that are trying but she ultimately comes out on top and like exemplifies something that you can like resonate with and then if you had and then like and she did she wasn't a bender she had no powers i know and like that's another thing that's interesting is like you know Sokka had no powers and so like that's part of why his growth is really interesting as well too is that he learns to be this great leader even when he is dealing with you know like um, with these people who are around him who are like stellar in in so many other ways and so like he has right. to 
He, he was... I mean, he traveled with a group of the most powerful benders, like, on the planet. Yeah. And he couldn't, he, like, he had no powers. Mm-hmm. Um, he had that awesome meteor sword, though. I think it was, I think it was awesome. And his trusty boomerang. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when he hit Sparky Sparky Boom Man in the eye. The third eye. <laughs> <laughs> that character was so bizarre. That was their that was their filler villain. Yeah. When when Zuko wasn't the villain anymore. <laughs> Sparky, Sparky, man. Yeah. I love what, that. He had did a they daughter. ever describe how he could do that? Uh, not exact. It was like a. It was, was it a, a form of fire bending. Yes, they called it combustion bending, where. Yeah, where basically you turned your firebending into like a missile and it's instead of like a instead of just like jets of flame. <laughs> so Yeah, but I yeah, I definitely I liked a lot of the side characters way more than than Korra herself. I just no. Uh, I don't know. I just didn't if it had, well, how about this? What do you think if it had come out before Avatar: The Last Airbender, like it couldn't have because of all like the throwback stuff that they do, but like, say that it had, say that like Legend of Korra came out and then like Avatar: The Last Airbender came out like as a prequel to like sort of show who all these other characters are, would would it be would it be better? Would it have been better? Do you think? Would it have been like? I, I think no. You still think Avatar, or you still think uh, no, Last no, Airbender? No, riding, riding in Avatar's, but I think Avatar might have might have gotten less viewership because Korra wasn't a great series. So people wouldn't have been interested. Like they're like, oh, they're making another series off the series that isn't good. Like, oh, whatever. Yep. Yeah, I could see that. So. And I mean, Korra like started out super popular because like everyone was like riding. It was like riding the coattails of Avatar, and then mm-hmm. viewership just plummeted because it wasn't as good. And that's why they moved it to online because they couldn't. Nick couldn't um, like justify giving it uh, like a prime time TV slot when they had all these other shows that were like making them like ridiculous amounts of money. Yep. So they can justify and, and it, like the, having online, and the slight, slightly more like adult themes, with like in season three, is here murdering people. Oh yeah, like actual, like people actual dying. Yep. Like for real. Yeah, I mean, having the wind forced out of your lungs until you suffocate is pretty brutal. <laughs> <laughs> And the, I mean, and the, I guess that's maybe a a problem with Korra is that I I liked the villains except for season two. I didn't like the season two villain. Um, I don't even remember who the season two villain was. He was her dad's brother. She it was his her uncle, um, and he was just like Asami's uncle. No, um, Korra's uncle. He was like, I oh, want to yeah. merge. I want to bring back this evil god because because I can. Because of reasons. Yeah, he's like, I want to be a, I want to be the dark avatar because reasons. Okay, I'm a bad guy too. <laughs> I can be a real bad guy. Yeah, he's like he's like the he's like the Kylo Ren of their of their film. <laughs> <laughs> so. So what do you think about that though? Like about about like car- cartoons like having having darker themes. I'm I'm fine with it. That's one of my like favorite things from from children's shows that I remember from growing up is that I I felt like um like friggin' Digimon season 3 has 
like really dark themes. Um, like really, really dark themes. I don't, well, uh, I don't know. I don't watch Digimon. Okay, so in, uh, so some of my favorite things from like cartoons and like children's shows growing up and everything was in, um, well, one I've just like burned in my memory uh, from my siblings watching Neon Genesis Evangelion. Uh, That's an this, anime. Though. Yeah. This is Japanese scene. based. So is that, is it, is it different than like Last Airbender or like Legend of Korra? Do you, do you put it in a different category? Um, because you want to talk about dark themes in animation, period. Yes. Holy that crap! Is- like Yu Yu Hakusho. Like holy crap! Like then, like Gundam Wing and Neon Genesis Evangelion, and like like you could go for hours about like even like Full Metal Alchemist, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Like holy crap! Like you could yeah. go for hours about the dark themes in that. So, but there's a scene where like the one of the mechs goes crazy and starts like cannibalizing one of the monsters, uh, and it's it's really bloody. Um, and so that's burned into my memory. Um, but then in Power Rangers, uh, in Lost Galaxy, one I mean one of the actors was sick, and so they like oh they her. killed yeah they killed yeah, her, they character. her character off by killing her, um, which was just like okay like the stakes Brutal are real for a kids you know, show yeah. Yeah, there, because there's there's definitely a slight suspension of disbelief in a lot of shows where the stakes don't feel quite real because no matter how bad it gets and no matter how strained you see the characters, you know that they win. Like, right. as a kid, you're like, like, like in okay. like in the animated Spider-Man series, right? Like in the animated Spider-Man series, there's like a scene where he like falls and he's like out of web fluid, but there's still yeah. 28 minutes like left in the show before they cut to a commercial. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, of course he makes it. Like, yeah. the last 28 minutes aren't like his funeral. Like, yeah. And, and that's another good example. Like, um, some characters like dying or going missing, like thrown into other dimensions, and characters not knowing what's happened to them, and um, like the whole clone arc where you, you find out that like. The Mary Jane Oops. who came back. Well, I mean, there's admittedly problems, but there were a lot of like good emotional moments where mm-hmm. like Peter thinks that Mary Jane's come back after being dead, and then finds out that she's just a clone and isn't even real. And like that's like And the other hard. Mary Jane is like in some like dimension. Yeah, and so like that's I'm hard for the character to deal okay. with. And so it's it's interesting to see you know, even though you know that Spider-Man as the main character isn't going to die, seeing characters around them die is interesting. Um, then, like in uh, like in Dragon Ball Z, every time Krillin dies, that like, doesn't count. Off. Because no one, no one really dies in Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> ah, <laughs> you just summon Shenron. And they're like, oh, bring back all the people that are dead. It's like, yeah. got you. Um, then. Uh, so with power, so I'm, I'll get back to Digimon and dark themes and that. But then in Power Rangers, Time Force, um, one of the like the villain, the main villain, had killed one of the characters in the future. I uh, think I remember you telling me about and this then when he I was goes to re-watching the past. Lost Galaxy. Yeah. Um. So he he goes to the past and like the the Rangers from the future follow him. And then they get a new Red Ranger, and it's it's a pretty good it's a pretty good season of Power Rangers. Uh, but the villain's daughter, who he's like raising, because and that one has some good kind of darker themes as well. Because basically, what the main villain is fighting for is that he's a terrorist, uh, kind of in he's like Magneto almost, uh, in that he's fighting for the rights of mutants. Because of all of the, like, toxic whatever that had been going on in the future, a bunch of people had gotten mutated. And all, some people, like, people who hadn't been mutated kind of hated them and were, like, yes, like well. racist and, you know, were um, persecuting them because of, the, like, the basically kind of, like, physical disabilities that they had. Okay. Uh, so he was, like, not about that. And he was kind of like a... Like a I guess eco terrorist is the wrong word, but you know, like terrorist. He's like Magneto. Yeah, yeah, Magneto. Yeah, Magneto well, the... that that comparison works, and it it doesn't work because like X Men is a parallel to 
the civil rights movement. Yeah. Because, like, mutants are, like, they meant for, like, Magneto to be, like, the Malcolm X character and Charles Xavier to be, like, the Martin Luther King character and, you know, so on and so forth. So, so he goes to the past and to, I forget exactly what he's planning on doing in the past. Um, to, like, uh, I, don't, I don't remember exactly his plan, but, like, he is gonna, oh, I think he's just planning on, like, killing off humanity and then letting Something everyone like. be kind of like when everyone's super no one will be kind of thing he's okay. like if, if everyone's a mutant then no one can persecute each other is i think his plan um and so but his daughter who he's been raising like this whole time to kind of be his successor and to like you know fight the power rangers and like be a terrorist with him and you know, <laughs> awesome family everything. activity Terrorism. She, 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 like, in the midst of one of their attacks or something, finds this lady, like, with her baby who's, like, running away and is terrified. And she sees this and is like, these are people. Like, like what we're doing is wrong and it's hurting people. And, like, these people, she's like, you care about your family. Like, they care about their families, too. Like, this, you know. So we're she can the finale is that he steps down and turns himself in because his daughter convinces him to have a change of heart. Like, and that's not like a dark theme, but like, in terms of like emotionally gripping things, character development, yeah, character development, and everything. Like, you know, someone, you know, real issues. I guess is what I'm is more what I'm thinking than necessarily dark issues in cartoons and movies. Like that's hold on, that wait. hold on, we'll, we'll say that again. You like went really quiet for a second. Oh, sorry. My my finger covered my microphone. So in terms of, like, yeah. real issues in children's media, not necessarily dark issues, but, like, real issues, that's something that I think about a lot. Um, and then in Digimon Season 3, uh, one of the characters, she she's, like, this kind of lonely character, and then she gets Digimon and is, like, really happy about it, and then he gets killed. Um, and I don't remember if his, like, egg gets killed, too, but, like, he... And she goes into this like really deep depression, um, like re- like real bad, like just like no one can console her out of just this her friend being murdered in front of her eyes, um, and yeah. So then one of the villains, uh, one of the villains, was a dark show. Wow. <laughs> yeah, one of the villains possesses her because of like all of the negative emotions around her from like her depression. And then she so becomes a villain. Did you... She becomes yeah. a villain. Well, she's like the host of the villain, so it's not technically her. Um, they managed to save her by like convincing her that like she has other friends who aren't dead. <laughs> um, but still, like that's like holy crap. Yeah, in terms of like a a show, actually, like having a character who is more more or less like clinically depressed like uh, yeah well wow that's yikes and then another dark moment in digimon is in season five um there's one of the villains uh he's he's scared of digimon and so he just wants to kill them all because he's like they scare me i should kill all of them um yeah he's that's got, like he's... the complete opposite of what happens in pokemon destiny deoxys yeah. Where the character he's... is like the the child is like afraid of Pokemon and then befriends like Deoxys, who's like this demigod Pokemon, like <laughs> Um He one of the one of the main characters' sister has a terminal illness and uh he the villain is like, I'll give you the cure to your sister's terminal illness if you kill your friends. <laughs> like Digimon's a great show. Lose like, lose situation. Yeah. What does so, he do? What happens? Well, he tries to kill his friends. <laughs> like what? Really? Yeah. What? He's like, I'm gonna save what? my sister. He's like, even if it means killing my friends, I'll he save doesn't, my like, sister. He like fight the villain to get the cure. Like, no, because like, I mean, they're struggling against the villain anyway. <laughs> like, what the? <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> what the hell is going on in Digimon? Digimon's like, a great show. It has the same plot structure for every season, but it's still a great show. <laughs> Even like Yu Gi Oh wasn't that dark. I mean, Yu Gi Oh season one, zero was that dark. One, except for the one. Uh, what was that character's name? He carries a gun. He has the American flag bandana. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, bandit key. Yeah, <laughs> bandit key. <laughs> You've and activated my strap card. Kaiba threatens to commit suicide if he loses the fight against Yuki. Kaiba's an edge lord. He's the ultimate edge lord character. Like, yeah. <laughs> On a scale of one to Kaiba, how big is your ego? Also, Kaiba in one of the movies. Um. So, like at the end of the series, uh, you, the Pharaoh like leaves Yugi. Um, because he's like, you know, every, he's like, all right, like, you know, I'm at peace now. We've like saved the world. Good job, us. Um, of course, another horrible supernatural thing happens, and they don't have the pharaoh anymore. And they're like, how are we gonna win this duel against like this the other god thingy? Um, because for Kaiba, some reason, we need to fight him by playing cards. Yeah, Kaiba has been doing research, uh, in how to bring the pharaoh's soul back because he wants to beat him in a duel because he had. <laughs> Still never won a duel against him. <laughs> At least not, like, really. <laughs> he only sort of won that one where he threatened to commit suicide if he lost. <laughs> so he dedicated his entire company to bringing the pharaoh's soul back from the afterlife. <laughs> <laughs> and so he manages to bring his soul back, like, in the movie. Wait, what? He really does? Yeah, but, like, he, I think he sacrifices himself to do it. Like, yeah, he, he, they're, they're in, like, a two, kind of two-headed giant, almost, kind of, duel against the main villain in the movie. And then he is, like, he sacrifices, he loses the duel, and somehow that, like, triggers the pharaoh's soul coming back from the afterlife or something like that. But Does he die? Uh, I mean, yeah, but I think he comes back somehow. I don't know. The Yu-Gi-Oh timeline's a little jacked up. Um, a little. Well, th- there's a... I, I watched some analysis videos of it if, about a year ago, maybe? Year, six months, a year, and sometime in the last year. Um, where basically there's this... There's, there's some crazy catastrophic event where either Kaiba's company goes into the development of this crazy technology or it doesn't and that's like the timeline split and so if it does it creates this one timeline um with a few of the Yu-Gi-Oh series and then another one it creates a different timeline and so yeah what the fuck is happening in these shows i watched pokemon like pokemon. nobody nobody killed each other like nobody died one time Charmander almost died. Well, that was very early. Gary's Raticade. Gary's Raticade canonically is dead. I'm Wait, what? Sure. How did that happen? When did that oh. happen? You don't know about Gary's Raticade? That's no. why Gary's in Lavender Town at a grave and he has a Raticade in his party until the SSN event. And then after the SSN, he never has a Raticade in his party again. And the next time you see him, he's in Lavender Town at a grave. Yeah, even I knew that. Wow, holy crap. I didn't... Okay, I was like 10 when Pokemon was on, okay? Like, come on. Karyok is also the best character. He he goes through actual uh, growth. You know, he's, he's also got... a better trainer than Ash. Ash is the world's most mediocre Pokemon trainer. Yeah. Like, after, after Gary loses to Mewtwo, he has a complete change of heart. And he becomes super dope. Wait, I just, I just realized. So, the in the movie, in the Yu-Gi-Oh movie, Kaiba uses the power of friendship to kill God. Yes. Mm-hmm. They're, they've, we got I mean, there. We got there. There's a, there's a lot of gods in Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, they believed in the heart of the gods. Use the power of friendship to kill God. There are a lot, a lot of gods in Yu-Gi-Oh. Thinking about like. Across all the different Yu-Gi-Oh! series, there's like a bazillion. 
a bazil- that's a lot of gods. It it is it is the most polytheistic children's show I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, uh, Claire and I actually have to get ready for a swing if she wakes. So. And I have. I have no idea what we're going to call this episode. Well, we were like rambling for a while, and then we got into dark themes and cartoons. So, I don't know. How did we get on this? I mean, we started off with talking about anthropomorphic boxes. Yeah, we were talking about that for kind of a a worrying amount of time. We started talking about D&D. No, Dead Cells. And then we were talking about D&D. What did we talk about after that? I mean, we can watch the episode after. Yeah, we'll we'll have to go back and watch the episode before we post the episode, but I'll post it by tomorrow. Yeah. On that note, next time we'll have some structure for you all. Yeah, we'll have... We usually have more structure when we have guest speakers. (laughs) You're not wrong. Yep, we have to... We have to look good for for the guests. <laughs> pretend that, <laughs> pretend it's, that the, it's the equivalent of like cleaning your house before your extended family arrives. Yeah, like, <laughs> uh, we we can shove all this stuff in the closet in the bedroom. <laughs> if your bed's not made, throw it away. It's too late. <laughs> we can't let people know we live here. Oh, this is a dish channel. <laughs> Oh, I'm crying. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we will we will figure out what we're doing with our lives and this show, and we'll see you next time on the Doctor Z Show. Adios.